Your nightly news with Rachel Williams begins now. Good evening everyone. A drunk and drugged driver who ran down and killed a student in 2005 has walked free from jail after being granted parole just over halfway through his prison term. Shane Anthony Main was sentenced to 25 years jail for killing Matthew Goldthorpe on a Launceston Street. But the parole board says Mr Main is now ready to return to the community. It was a crime which shocked the state. Brutal and horrifying, the judge's words describing the final moments of Matthew Goldthorpe's life. A life ended when Shane Anthony Maine, with deliberate cruelty, aimed his car at the 19-year-old student and because he thought it would be funny, ran him over. He then turned the car around and did it again. The Victorian student, new to Launceston, had simply asked for directions. The killer driver, Shane Anthony Maine, was sentenced to 25 years jail. Oh, but now he's walking free, granted parole 14 years into his sentence. The parole board found Mr Main shows motivation and reasonable prospects of rehabilitation and reform. He's also been involved with a drug treatment program while at Risdon Prison, enough to see him paroled for the remainder of his sentence. This isn't the first time Mr Main has been let out of jail. He was allowed to volunteer at animal welfare groups in 2017 and 2018, but that was revoked when he began trafficking tobacco back into prison. The parole board was provided a victim impact statement from Matthew Goldthorpe's mother Pauline, which began with, what can I say about Luna Say and the effect it has had on us as a family and our own individual journey. Mr Main will be supported by family and church-based services as he begins life back in the community. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. Wildlife advocates are calling for a halt to wind farm developments as new figures reveal the number of deaths at existing sites. Right to information documents confirm five endangered wedge-tailed eagles have died at Tasmanian wind farms in the past 18 months. Bonnarong's Wildlife Hospital treats thousands of injured animals every year. Injured eagles are among the patients. The raptors may be large, but they're fragile. I think any time an endangered species is killed, it's, it's going to be a concern. I guess let alone one that probably already has uh, quite a few pressures on them. So whether that's um, our actions as people or the fact that there are just limited territories for them in the state. Right to information documents from Depipwi reveal the scale of deaths at wind farms over the past 18 months. Three wedge-tailed eagles were found dead at Muscle Row. Over at Woolnorth, two were found injured and had to be euthanised. A vulnerable white-bellied sea eagle was also found dead in the far northwest. And the fact that they mate for life, of course, means that if one goes, it does significantly infect breeding for a number of years. So, um, yeah, look, any deaths are, are a tragedy. Warnorth Wind Farm Holdings, which owns and operates the sites, says it is continuing to implement initiatives to keep eagle collisions to a minimum, and newly available technologies are being explored as a high priority. With more wind farm developments on the horizon, the government says it's listening to the experts. While we have sensible developments in renewable energy, we also recognise that we need to look to the experts about any management plans that would be uh, required to be met by wind farm operators. So it's really hard to know what the solutions are, um, are going to be, but I think research is absolutely key here. And if that means putting things on hold for a while to get it right, then that's probably what needs to happen. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. Operators of the BassLink cable are trying to fix a fault that's cut Tasmania's electricity connection with other states. BassLink today confirmed its interconnector suffered another trip on Saturday, leaving the cable offline until at least tomorrow. Tasmania's main electrical cable is once again in hot water. BassLink has confirmed the interconnector tripped on Saturday morning, isolating the state from the national energy market. The government today were tight-lipped on the issue. The questions as to the outage uh, could only be answered by the operator and the owner of that asset. Investigations into the cause of the trip are ongoing, but the companies say it should be online tomorrow. It's the latest in a line of incidents and breakdowns, including a crippling six-month outage in 2016. Energy expert Mark White says the reliability of the cable needs to be investigated. It's becoming a bit too common. So whilst um, outages are not uncommon in undersea cables, um, the fact is that this one seems to be having ongoing problems. 
power remains on for homes and businesses. Hydro Tasmania says its dams sit at 45% capacity, well above the required levels. Mr White says the dam operator itself is the most affected by the outage. As we'd had good rains, we were exporting quite a bit of energy to Victoria and making some money out of that. So we're missing out on a bit of that. The outage comes as plans are in motion for a second cable. Michael Ferguson says they remain committed to the project despite today's news. Significant work underway right now to allow Tasmania to take advantage of the possibility of a second interconnector. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Well, the federal government has praised the progress and success of the Launceston City deal, announcing it's extended the scheme by five years. But key projects of the deal, including building a new university campus and cleaning up the Tamar River, are yet to get underway. Two years in and all levels of government are pleased with the progress. And since that time, a number of projects have commenced already in our city. We have already achieved so much in terms of delivering for the people of Launceston. We are delivering. The results are on the board as people walking through our city are able to see immediately. The Brisbane Street Mall redevelopment is complete and additional $54 million has been spent on student accommodation and there's been strong interest in the Tamar Action Grants program. But when it comes to fixing the Tamar River, work is yet to start. It should start to happen obviously with the um, 10 million that's rolled out now. I would hope by within three to five years we're going to see a significant difference in our river. As for the relocation and redevelopment of the University of Tasmania's Launceston campus. Planning is well underway. We'll see the sods being turned in the next six to 12 months. The university has submitted a development application for stage one, which includes a new library and a bridge connecting the campus to the city centre. It hopes to begin construction in the first half of next year. I think we now have the right plan. The development applications um, are in and we're looking forward to getting those buildings out of the ground. The Launceston City deal has been extended by five years, turning it into a decade-long vision for the region. An additional $55 million will be pumped into the deal by the federal government, with $30 million of that bound for a new defence innovation and design precinct. As for the city deal down south... I'll be catching up with the mayors tomorrow and we'll be discussing the implementation plan there. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. Launceston's northern suburbs will be targeted under a new plan to reinvigorate the area. The Northern Suburbs Revitalisation Plan was launched at Rant Arts in Invermatia Day. It will focus on strengthening and building communities as well as improving public spaces. To have it transformed into a rich, vibrant community uh, hub for the benefit of everybody in the northern suburbs is probably um, my favourite part. $15 million in federal funding will go towards the re revitalisation plan. Now for another look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to Bank of Us, Tasmania's customer-owned bank. The Australian stock market closed sharply lower with every sector in negative territory. The ASX 200 index fell 83 points and a short time ago the Australian dollar was trading at 67.32 US cents and 70.86 Japanese yen. Former Kingra player Hugh Dixon has had an AFL debut to remember at Adelaide Oval last night. With just a minute left to go, the Fremantle draftee booted his side's last goal of the season from the pocket. Heads long, McKenzie. Here's Dixon. Bends it around. Oh, yes. I think he's got it. Hugh Dixon, first goal in AFL footy. The 20-year-old was picked up by the Dockers at number 44 in the 2017 draft. It wasn't the result his side wanted, though. Port Adelaide thumped Frio by 43 points. The final votes are in for the RACT Insurance Player of the Year in the TSL, with Cole Agala now claiming the three votes for North Hobart against Clarence. Launceston's Tim Bristow was judged best of field against the Tigers. And Josh Ponting led the way for the Northern Bombers against Glenorchy. Or well, Brad Cox Goodyear picked up the two votes. And that was enough to see Cox Goodyear pass Launceston's Fletcher Seymour to be named the TSL's Player of the Year for 2019. Brad Cox Goodyear has one of the most extensive resumes in the league's history. Four-time Premiership player, two-time Bulldog medalist, captain of his club. And now, for the first time, winner of the RACT Insurance Player of the Year. If you look at the, uh, the previous winners of the award, there's some very good names on there. 
Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's nice to be alongside some of those names. Cox Goodge's final match against Glenorchy saw him leapfrog Fletcher Seymour in the title race. While he wouldn't single out a favourite moment from the year, he says leading nearly a dozen fresh faces into this year's final series will be a highlight. It comes back to everyone buying into what we're trying to do as a, as a team. Um, we know we had the talent, it was just whether these guys could get up to speed and be able to perform at a TSA level, which they have. So, but now the challenge is to do it for two more, two more games. As for how he'll spend the two and a half thousand dollar travel voucher? I don't know, I have to talk to the partner about that one. She'll probably have the final say on that. While the TSL is pleased to see the competition even out in 2019. We saw Launceston uh, win a couple of games at home and then travel down and lose to North Hobart. We, we saw Clarence push Glen Orkey and then next week come out and beat uh, Lauderdale. So I think uh, some really close contests, and, which is really healthy for the competition. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. And former Tigers and Hurricanes skipper George Bailey is hoping to have his body right to go in time for the start of the domestic campaign with the veterans still nursing injury niggles while the women are raring to go following a long pre-season. Back home after an interesting global T20 season in Canada. A little pay to spit, a little bomb threat. Uh, at one stage Chris Gale's team scored 275 against us and we were heading out to try and chase it down and they told us that there's a storm on its way and... Uh, we wouldn't be allowed to finish the game, so we took one point each. I thought the storm would already come. The 36-year-old tread carefully with his troublesome shoulder during the campaign and is still working to get it right in time for the Tigers' one-day cup opener in a month's time. Still sort of working out um, how that will pan out and whether I'll be throwing uh, right or left-handed for the season. Hopefully, by certainly by a big bash, I'll be back throwing right-handed. Following the longest pre-season in the women's program's history, which saw them recently take out the Northern Territory Strike League in Darwin, the squad gets another chance to fine-tune ahead of their first WNCL match on September 22 during a series of practice matches in Adelaide next week. Even though we've had a lot of new players come in, um, there's still that strong connection with the, the group and we're all on the same page and, and those, um, that, those games up in the NT really showed that and showed that everyone's heading in the right direction in terms of um, how they need to perform in games for us to win. To soccer and South Hobart has continued its push for a second place finish on the MPL ladder thanks to a cruisy 3-0 win over Riverside overnight. With the boys from Darcy Street keen to build some momentum ahead of their exhibition clash with A-League side, the Central Coast Mariners on September 10. It's a motivation for the players to, to keep fit, to keep sharp and to keep working on the technical abilities and the, the footballing game. And uh, yeah, I think it gives them a great, a great kick in the pants to keep going. Good evening. Temperatures range from minus three at Lake Leak to our top today of 17 at Friendly Beaches. Hobart and Launceston 15 today, Burnie 14 and Devonport 13 degrees. St Helens and Grove reached 15, Smithton and Ooze 14, Low Head Strawn and the Bass Strait Islands 13, Lyre Weenie just seven. A few showers over the west and a spot or two over the north and parts of the south today. Best reading to 3pm, 10 millimetres at Mount Reed. And here's the cloud that developed today, mostly low level cloud over the state bringing those light showers. Further north and the bigger picture with the cloud, cloud with a cold front extends across the southern ocean with a cold pool of air over Tasmania and the southern states. Some low cloud over the east of the nation and a little over inland Western Australia. Tomorrow the high remains over the bite but that cold front to the south should be with us on Wednesday. Troughs sit over the northeast and northwest of the nation. Winds west to uh, northwest at 15 to 25 knots reaching 30 knots over the south and west. A bit stronger over the southwest later in the day. A gale warning from South East Cape to Low Rocky Point has been issued along with a strong wind warning from Tasman Island to South East Cape and also from Low Rocky Point to Stanley. Hobart, Tuesday, 16 and partly cloudy. Partly cloudy for Adventure Bay on 14, a shower or two for Taralea, a high of 11 degrees. 15, the top for Launceston and partly cloudy. Maybe a late shower for Devonport, 14 the maximum. Bridport, the same, 14 degrees. Burnie a shower or two, 14 the maximum, 13 the top for Strawn and Marrawal with showers in the west and the winds picking up. And in the east, partly cloudy, 16 for St Helens, up to 17 for Swansea, a shower for Whitemark on Flinders, 14 degrees. On Wednesday, as the front approaches, we'll see showers extending across the state before contracting to the west, south and northeast. Snow down to 600 metres as well. Fine on Thursday, apart from morning showers over the northeast and south coast, but not much in that. And on Friday, areas of morning frost, followed by a mostly fine day. A sunny 22 in Perth tomorrow, cool and cloudy in Adelaide, a fine day for Melbourne, a shower though for Canberra and Sydney, maybe a storm too for Brisbane. Clear conditions over the state at the moment, 10 in Hobart, 9 degrees in Launceston, 9 also in Devonport. After four weeks away, Rachel, I'm so overjoyed to be back. 
Well, Jo, wasn't she left for the night? <laughs> Thanks for all of that, Murph. Well, thank you for joining us. Bye for now.